Get ready for a very troubling reality of this election cycle. And it's that this election is unlikely to be over on the night the votes are cast, irrespective, and this is the part you really have to get ready for, irrespective of what the actual voting is. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Unless you have some massive Trump landslide, even then, I've got to tell you, um, even then, I've got to tell you, it's probably going to turn into lawfare. They're going to fight it out in the courts. There are multiple mechanisms that Democrats have already put in place. I want to walk you through what people are talking about now as a possible soft coup attempt. 2.0 wouldn't be the first time, right? The, the, the coup that may yet come. There was the uh, Michael Anton piece in the American mind uh, about this. I've been talking about a coup coming possibly for months. The way they'll try to engineer this, the mechanism for this. All of it, right? And you see, you add all this up, the mail-in ballot voting, you take that, you take the Russia narrative, oh, Russia's trying to do things again, we'll get to that. And now you have the, the story that the polls all show Biden winning. This is what, I'm telling you what the Democrat mentality is. All show Biden winning. And so if come election night, Democrats end up with another surprise. Oh, just like 2016. And, and looks like Trump is going to be the president for four more years. They've already built the narrative so that they can easily just say, no, don't believe we don't believe it. We don't believe it's true. Trump didn't win. The, the mail in ballots are still being counted from all these states that have allowed unsecured loose ballots just floating around there. Who knows how many are in the mail? Who knows if they send out millions? They only need perhaps a couple hundred thousand to, to even be sent in any capacity to claim that we can't know. So then they extend it out. And it also then creates a delay because, well, what about what about postmarking the next day? Are they going to be able to, to count these anyway? Are they going to fight? Are they going to say, you know, there's endless shenanigans that they can try. And I do think that we need to be prepared for that. I think that they're preparing for it. I think that this is what we're seeing happening right now. They simply can't process it. I'm going to tell you this, team. If, if we lose this election, and we might, we might, as crazy as that. I know, I know, don't, don't, don't flip your station or stop the podcast. If we lose this election, it's going, to, it's going to be bad. There are lots of words, bad words I'd like to use about what that would make me feel like. A lot of blankety, blanking, blanking, blank. But... If we lose, okay, maybe the country's lost, I don't know, but we keep fighting, we rally, we do what we can, and we go down fighting one way or the other. And we enjoy every day we've got because every day above ground is better than the alternative. That's the attitude. If libs, if Democrats lose this election, they will turn into shrieking puddles of emotional refuse on the ground. They're not going to be able to handle it. And they've, they already know this. Because everything they think about themselves, it's so deeply personal for them. You know, if someone can convince me that they have a better argument than what I have thought for a long time, if they really can convince me, I go, oh, okay, I guess I was wrong about that, you know? Always open to that possibility. And I have changed my mind on things over time. Heck, I was worried that Trump was going to be completely in over his head during the primary as president, supported him in the general election. See, I'm honest about that. A lot of other people who are like, oh, I love Marco Rubio so much. I hate Donald Trump. Now they're all, you know, people who called Trump, I don't know, an idiot, for example, on their radio show and now suck up to him every chance that they get. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who did that. You could probably look it up on the inter in the interwebs. There's somebody out there and there, there are people that pretend. I tell you the truth. I thought that Trump would have a hard time with this and he's been an excellent president. And he's shown us from day one that he is a fighter and that he is trying to do his best for the American people. And, you know, if you're not willing to admit that you mis misanalyze something or, you know, you're not a good analyst. If you misunderstood something and you won't change your mind, I mean, then you're just an ideologue. You're not actually a person who's engaging with the facts. That is the definition of the modern Democrat Party right now. It doesn't matter what the facts are. It doesn't matter what the reality of our country is right now. They've already they've already set it up. So that it's impossible for Trump to get a clean win. 
And that's the goal of all this. In fact, they've even gone a step further. O- over the weekend, there was this piece that I saw in The Atlantic, which is one of the more uh, supposedly intellectually snobbish, although they write a lot of garbage and have a lot of pseudo-intellectuals that write for it. I mean, it's really a lot of people that aren't nearly as bright as they think they are. They just echo what other libs, what other libs want and, and break out a thesaurus when they're writing their essays. But here we go. Um, I've got to show you, I, I've got to tell you about this one. This is a, a particularly galling, a particularly galling circumstance here. Um, I, <laughs> you have this guy shot, uh, wait, what's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find his name. All right. The, the basics of it are the Democrat, the Democrat party won't be able to concede. Therefore. Sorry, I was trying to find the, this guy's name and piece, and my computer, of course, was giving me a, a hassle during it. Here, Shadi Hamid, that's right, in The Atlantic. Quote, I argue that even strictly law and order Republicans have an interest in Biden winning. If Biden loses, mass unrest is more unlikely because the left will have more difficulty uh, accepting the results. Wait, that's not that doesn't make sense. If Biden loses, mass unrest is... They mean if Biden wins, mass unrest is more unlikely. Anyway, the piece is about how Democrats won't be able to concede. That's the title of the piece. And what they're saying is that, look, guys, if you want the country to return to normal, you got to vote for Biden. You got to vote for Biden because otherwise we're just going to get crazier and crazier. We can't handle it. I mean, some Democrats are actually going so far as to say that now. They're telling you this. They're saying, look. You see all these protests? You think this is bad now? Just wait until we get into a position where we feel like there's no future because we're completely nuts. And we're we're ripping the... Basically, this is Democrats saying, if if Biden doesn't win, we're going to rip the country apart. So let's all vote for Biden. This is what the pitch has turned into. Does Does that line up with the overall Democrat messaging on this? Of course it does. This is not surprising in the least. Right. Does that line? Of course, it lines up with this. This is the implied threat along. This is the coercive component of BLM. It's why they're going out and yelling at old people in the streets with loudspeakers and ruining people's dinners and lunches and yelling at them in restaurants and showing up outside public officials homes and waking people up in the middle of the night. And this is all coercion. It's all meant to spread the psychosis that the libs live in because Trump is president. The rest of us are like, country's fine. Country's actually, you know, yeah, COVID's been bad, but we're dealing it. We're almost, we're dealing with it. We're almost through it. It wasn't Trump's fault as much as they try to pretend it is. It's absurd. And things are okay. We're not fighting some horrible war. We don't have planes getting blown out of the, sto- uh, out of the sky by terrorists. Well, you know, the economy's recovering. Yeah, you know, the administration is trying to get money out to people and businesses and, you know, we want to reopen and we want our lives back. What's the big problem with Trump? The border issue has calmed down for now. I mean, we haven't settled illegal immigration yet, but the border issue is not not in the same uh, emergency situation that it was. And yeah, here we are. They think that if Trump is elected, that the country is over. They've created a narrative of existential duress for the nation if the sitting president is re-elected, it's like they learned nothing. They acted like the country was going to be destroyed if tr- once Trump won, because they didn't think that was really possible. Now here we are, four years in. Country's doing fine. Country's not destroyed. People are fine. People aren't getting marched off into, you know, into camps and being told to break rocks with mallets because they voted for Democrats. And there's not, none of these horrible things. There's no fascism. They haven't suspended election. All these things we've been told. He's not actually a, a puppet of Putin, although they still say that like complete morons. But now it's just the same thing all over again. But, but it's even worse. It's, it's exaggerated in their minds. The threat is even greater. We've had a normal person would see Trump as president for four years. The country hasn't fallen apart. He hasn't destroyed the nation. So now let's understand that if he's president for four more years and we have the continuation of what we've seen, things are going to be fine. That's what a normal person would do, just with those facts. 
What Democrats do is, oh my gosh, see, he is destroying the nation, and if we, we can't live if he does four more years, oh no. They, they really do believe this stuff. I used to think that it was largely theatrics uh, for viewers and just because it was useful propaganda. But no, these, these Democrats, these libs are not such talented actors. A lot of them really believe this, friends. And that means they're willing to go to the most extreme lengths imaginable to not just try to defeat the president, which they still could do, but to steal the election from him if he wins. And now they're even telling you Biden better win or else that's considered a pitch for Biden to get more votes. Hey, guys, if, if Joe Biden doesn't win this election, country might just get burned down, you know, burned down in a big smoldering heap because of all the uh, rioting Democrats out there. So let's all let's all come together and avoid that by voting for Biden. That's what the piece in the Atlantic is saying. They may not be able to concede. They may not be. This is a, from a Democrat, folks. He's a Democrat writing. And he's admitting Democrats will not be able to psychologically process this. They've, they've gotten so frenzied. They're so su- surrounded with their, with their MSNBC and their, their tweets from celebrities and all their friends who all are so woke and the whole, the whole mess, all this nonsense. Can't just take a deep breath, take a step back and go, hold on a second. Trump hasn't murdered millions of people. Trump isn't destroying the country. He's not erasing all freedoms. He's not a fascist. He, he, he's, he's not a racist as much as they like to say he is. May, maybe they could just take a breath, take a chill, and accept that, or at least think about the prospect that the Democrats, the left, have bad ideas that don't work. They're illogical. History shows they fail. And they're irresponsible and utterly emotional and childish in how they deal in American politics these days. So maybe a little bit of reflection and a little bit of chill would take the Democrats a very long way, but instead they are going to take the amp, not just to 11, even though it only goes to 10. They're going to find a way to take it to 12, and they're going to blast out everybody's eardrums. They will completely lose their minds, and they think that's a reason to vote for Biden. New from number one New York Times bestselling author Vince Flynn comes Total Power, a Mitch Rapp novel by Kyle Mills. In this next novel in the bestselling Mitch Rapp series, it's a race against the clock when ISIS takes out the entire U.S. power grid and throws the country into utter chaos. The story will keep you on the edge of your seat while taking you through a destructive cyber attack on our nation, making you ask yourself, Will it be lights out for America or can our top assassin save us from plunging into darkness? This works in so many of the real terrorist and cyber threats that the national security apparatus has been working against for years. This novel will work you through all of that and, of course, keep you on the edge of your seat. The Real Book Spy calls Total Power a serious contender for best book of the year. If you're a fan of suspense and thriller, this is the book for you. Take back the power, Total Power. The new Mitch Rapp thriller from Vince Flynn, available September 15th in hardcover, ebook, and audio. Pre order it now. Because he put the most vicious ad on television that I've ever seen. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where I'm standing over the graves of our fallen warriors, our fallen heroes. These are great people, the greatest people there are. And I'm standing over there, and they have some sleazebag reporter from a third-rate magazine having some source quoting me, saying, I won't even use the term, but saying bad things. And there's nobody that loves our military, respects it, and the people more than me. And they took... And I didn't even ask. We had 25 people that were witnesses that are on the record already that have said that never took place. It never took place what they said. And yet, pathetic Joe, and he's a pathetic human being to allow that to happen. 25 people on the record saying the Atlantic story didn't take place. And yet... We still have to hear that the president hates the military. That was never a credible story. 
the president has disdain for the military. Let me say something about, about, about guys like Trump, because he's a New Yorker like me, and there's a, there's a certain no BS, a little sarcastic, aggressive mentality and personality that New Yorkers tend to have, right? So P- producer Mark has a little bit of it. I've got a little bit of it. You know, there's just a, we got a way, we got a way of being here. And Trump definitely has. Trump's from Queens. He's a Queens boy. I'm a Manhattan boy. Trump is a Queens boy, actually. Producer Mark, you're a Queens boy, aren't you? I am a Queens boy. There we go. Exactly. You know, Queens guys like love family, good food, and you don't want to push them too far. You, you, don't, you don't want to push them too far. It's, it's a bad, bad place to go. And you don't want to try to rip them off either. They, uh, they, don't, like, they don't like anyone playing games. You know, Man- Manhattan is a little similar, except we spend a little more time out at the country club. Same idea, though. Same basic mentality. And here's the thing. There's no way that Trump, if there's any group of people in the world that, that the president of the United States, while he's president and before he's president, clearly respects, it's our combat veterans. It's our airmen, soldiers. It's our Navy, Marines, Air Force, Army. All right. It, there's, and so that's why the story, but they're so desperate to come up with some way to siphon off that strong veteran support for Trump, but they're just, they're just going with this. They're just going with this. Yeah, so the, the president said that his generals are a bunch of wimps. General, generals are allowed to be criticized, okay? And generals are no longer on the front lines. They're not in combat. He has some harsh words for his generals. Guess what? He's allowed to. But he respects the men and women who put on the uniform, who serve their country every day, who do it for very little pay, at a lot of personal costs and at risk of their lives because they love this country because they're patriots. This president respects those people. There's, there's absolutely no reason to believe otherwise. Okay, yeah, there are, there are people that use their service or someone else's service as a, try to, a, a weapon to attack the president politically, and he's going to respond. But this guy, look, is, is the Democrat line really that he... He hates the military, and the military is just not smart enough to figure it out. The people in the military who support Trump, they just don't realize. Usually, you don't like people that disdain you and think that you're losers, right? So, so who really has disdain for the military? The news media, the press. They do. They always have had it. How many, you know how many journos there are running around? You're like, oh, my gosh, yeah, the military. I don't know if that's for me. Or any kind of service to their country. Tons of them. Who writes stories? Who's the, the first people that want to tell everybody about how there was a, a civilian casualty incident with the military? You know, who, who ran wild with his, his front page Abu Ghraib stories every day just to fame the entire military because there were some people who were doing bad things? Uh, the journalists. So I just think it's interesting that, that they really are doing what the uh, psychologists would call projection here. Trump doesn't hate the military, but if there's anybody that doesn't have due respect for the military, it's not all journalists, and there are journalists who are former military, and I know that, but a lot of lib media people really think that the, the military is a bunch of, uh, you know, unsophisticated, undereducated, uh, you know, they really do have that attitude about it. And I think, it's, I think it's so clear they're trying to push this onto Trump, and it's all just nonsense. Um, what are we seeing with these fires out in California? You know, they often talk about Trump as a, as a fascist. I'll, I'll give you an example of what a fascist demagogue actually sounds like. And uh, here's a hint. Not Trump, but out on the West Coast, there is someone who I do believe also has presidential aspirations who may not really think of himself as a fascist, but certainly does a good impression of an enviro- enviro-fascist when given the opportunity. The heat dome over the entire West Coast of the United States, when you have temperatures, record-breaking temperatures, record droughts, then you've got something else at play. And that's exactly what the scientists have been predicting for a half a century. It is here now. California, folks, is America fast forward. What we're experiencing right here is coming to a community 
all across the United States of America unless we get our act together on climate change, unless we disabuse ourselves of all the BS that's being spewed by a very small group of people that have an ideological reason to advance the cause of a 19th century framework and solution. We're not going back to the 19th century. We're not apologists to that status quo. We believe in the fresh air of progress versus the stale air, emphasis stale air, normalcy. California is America fast forward. I certainly hope not. California was a beautiful, I mean, it's, let's just, let's take a step back for a moment. California is one of the most, I mean, along the coast, the interior, I'm sure has some nice places, but let's be honest. We spend most of your time around along the coast is where you're talking about the beautiful stuff. And California is one of the most geographically fortunate places in the world. You know, you get around Big Sur and you're up in the Monterey area and even you get down the coast. I mean, I drove from L.A. to San Diego a couple of years back. I mean, it's just gorgeous, incredibly bountiful for I mean, the, the, the coastline, the access to the Pacific Ocean. They've got wonderful uh, vineyards. I mean, look, I'm not trying to do an ad for the state of California. I'm just trying to bring up that Democrats, largely with the help of illegal immigration, Right. Illegal immigrants come in and then they have children here. And then those illegal immigrants, those households tend to vote Democrat. So then when the children grow up, they vote Democrat. And, you know, that's how they flipped it. So it's just the bluest of blue states. Now, California was a reliably Republican state. California had Governor Ronald Reagan gave us Reagan and was going red up until I think the uh, H.W. Bush presidency and national elections. So it wasn't it wasn't that long ago that California was a a play. Look, it was the American dream. I grew up in the in the late 80s and in the early 90s. And it was like every movie I saw was based in. I know that's where the studios were, but it was all based in California. And the ideal existence, it seemed to the American teenager circa, you know, 1988 was to live in, you know, the live in a house in California within striking distance of the ocean and learn how to surf and skateboard. Like this was the ideal and the weather's perfect. And there's all these beautiful people. And now Democrats have been in charge entirely for let's call it the last, eh, last 20 to 30 years. And they're ruining it. They're, they're ruining it. Okay. The state is going through ruination. I was out in LA a year ago and I spent, I spent, I've spent weeks and weeks in LA in the last few years. And everyone that I was talking to as a native was like, look, I love this place, but it's just, there are people, you know, there's, there's, uh, vagrants urinating in the street all over the place. And there's tent cities and the traffic is nightmarish and there are power outages because they don't know how to hand, they don't know how to keep the electrical grid going. And you know, the, the petty, uh, Quality of life crimes are terrible. You know, there's just all this stuff that's happening, all these things that are going on. And sure enough, sure enough, uh, the state is finally falling apart. And now you have these wildfires, which is not the first time in recent years we've had also major fires. There, I think there are a few million acres that are either burning or have been burned. And it's not just California, it's California. It's Oregon and Washington State. These are prim- primarily in uninhabited but you know, wooded, wooded areas, and the fires are really bad, and they, they are out of, out of control right now. And what are we told is the only answer to this? Climate change. I, I, I sit here, and I, I want to ask the question, what natural disaster at this point is not attributable to a liberal, to a Democrat, what natural disaster is not attributable to climate change now in this current environment? Anything? Is there anything that we can say? Hurricanes? Climate change. Wildfires? Climate change. Go down the list. Floods? Climate change. Mudslides? Climate change. I mean, you, you just look at all this stuff and you say, Okay, now let's just put aside for a second that that seems just very simplistic in its thinking. And if you're wondering how much warmer, they keep, they keep saying it's the desiccation of forests, which is a fancy way of saying dry forests. 
Okay. They love to say desiccation of forests because it sounds sciency. Dry forests. Heat, dry. There you go. The desiccation of forests has created greater um, uh, risks for these, for these forests than there have been in the past. And then it's, okay, well, how much warmer are we really talking about? You know, Gavin Newsom there, who's telling you, remember, California, and in a sense, he's right. California is the future of the whole country if the Democrats have their way. Rolling blackouts, quality of life plummeting, super high taxes, flight from the state. And, and for those who are saying, oh, but look at Silicon Valley. When did Silicon Valley really get going? The 90s. Right. Hollywood is a legacy institution that happened to be in L.A., but stretching way back to when L.A., or at least when California, was still often in Republican hands. It takes time to ruin a place, and, you, and, and there's often a period where you can just be essentially milking the cow before you end up killing the cow, right? And that's what Democrats do in these places. They, these states, New York, California, they get fat and happy, you know, there used to be kind of Rockefeller Republicans. There was a little bit more of a. There, there were some serious periods of time in, in New York State's history when it was certainly more conservative in its leanings than it is now. But De- California is a perfect example of the rapid change that you get when the left wing takes over. But they're showing you now the results of their policies. When the mayor, Mayor Garcetti, has to tell people, yeah, turn your, turn your thermostat to, I think it was 78 degrees. A 78-degree house is really warm, folks. Papa Buck's going to be sweating a whole lot in a 78-degree house. But here we are. Continue to look at this, continue to think, well, what's the answer? Oh, there's only one answer. There's only one answer. Tom Steyer he who doth own only one tie, despite being a billionaire, he gives you his answer. Play six. This is a global problem. Look, this is crying out for national and international leadership. What's the, the number one thing we can do is elect a different president who's going to recognize the problem, deal with it forcefully at home, deal with it forcefully overseas. That's actually the only solution we have to this problem and is honest to God, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a solution to climate change. That's they, they really believe that. Right. Trump, they said, couldn't build a wall, which actually the wall, they've had about 250 miles built, about 300 miles, according to Chief Scott of the Border Patrol, roughly 300 miles currently being built, 250 miles built. You're looking at about in a pretty short period of time here from from today, it'll be five, six hundred miles of wall. But building a wall is impossible. Changing the global climate, that's that's just requires leadership. That's what the Democrats want you to think now. That's their uh, their belief. Friends, this is entirely. Unserious. I mean, it's a serious threat to our economy, to our way of life. But this proposition that if only we took climate change more seriously, we wouldn't have forest fires, we wouldn't have hurricanes. Are we going to invade China and shut down all their factories and change all their environmental practices? Are we going to tell India, sorry, no more cars? I mean, global leadership, what, what is that even? The, the Paris Climate Accord, which is what Democrats point to, is a, big, is a big pile of nothing. There's no enforcement mechanism. It's all kind of self-reported and self-graded. And yeah, sure, we're doing a great job limiting carbon emissions. Let's go to a fancy meeting. We'll all sit around and talk to each other about how we are leading on the climate. No, Great. Really fancy. Really, really wonderful stuff. Uh, but this is a religious belief, friends. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what evidence I show. It doesn't matter that the average temperature in California now as compared to decades ago. I think it's one or two degrees warmer. <gasps> You know, that's what we're talking. That's what climate change really says, that the climate may be a degree or two warmer on average in the next 50 to 100 years. I think it's also worth noting that we've seen the scientific community, which is a very broad and really useless term, but we've seen the scientific community use modeling to tell us how many people are going to die from COVID-19, like the IHME models, the University of Washington, sponsored by Bill Gates. 
And they've been wrong, not just in advance of the numbers, they've been wrong like a week before. They can't predict squat. They're wrong and wrong again on an issue of urgent life and death national importance. They were way off, way off. But the scientific community, again, broad term, it doesn't really mean all that much, wants you to think that they can tell you what the average global temperature change will be in 50 to 100 years based on the change in what is, uh, accounts for, I think it's less than 2% of the atmosphere. Um, that's, what, that's what they're telling you. It, it's stunning. It's unbelievable. But it's a religious belief for people who think they're too smart for religion. I'm sorry, 0.04% of the atmosphere. CO2, 0.04% of the atmosphere. So they're telling you that a change in the composition of 0.04% of the atmosphere is going to destroy all life as we know it based on their models. And if you have questions about this and in the meantime, you still want your air conditioning to work and your refrigerator to stay on and you want, I mean, California has mismanaged its water usage, has mismanaged its forests, has mismanaged its electricity. Because instead of looking at these issues for what they are, they have all these external beliefs of the climate change religion that influence everything else they're doing. Talk to anyone who knows land development, talk to anyone in real estate in California. It's a nightmare of regulations, of environmentalist groups funded by people like Steyer, who, you know, they get to live in a $20 million mansion in Malibu overlooking the ocean and tell all those dirty, poor people in the California interior, turn off your refrigerator, turn off your air conditioning. How dare you? Do you realize what you're doing to the climate? People are arrogant frauds. And yet, that's the, it's a central ethos of the Democrat Party now. And if you, if you question this, they look at you like you're nuts. Even though what, the, what, that, I've, what that I've said to you here is in any way, should be in any way controversial. And yes, they have been unwilling to allow for management of forests uh, because they don't, they 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 believe forests should be entirely untouched. So the, the forestry management system is terrible, which means that there's a lot more undergrowth, which means it burns a lot faster and hotter than it normally would. They they don't know what they're doing, friends. They don't know what they're doing, but they know you're wrong if you question it. And Gavin Newsom's here to tell you they want to control the power you use in your home, the the appliances, everything about your life because of climate change, could come under the control of these religious zealots of the worship Earth religion. And Gavin Newsom saying this is coming to the whole country if you just let the Democrats do what they want. Doesn't sound like a good thing to me, friends. I listen to fire professionals, um, not the president of the United States or a politician when it comes to actually what causes these fires. Uh, It's been very clear uh, that years of drought, as we're seeing, whether it's too much water and too much rain in parts of our country right now or too little, this is climate change. And this is an administration that's put its head in the sand Uh, while we have Democratic and Republican mayors across the country stepping up to do their part. This is an administration, a president who wants to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accords uh, later this year. Uh, the only country in the world to do so. Uh, Talk to a firefighter if you think that climate change isn't real. And it seems like this administration are the last vestiges of the Flat Earth Society of this generation. We need real action. We need to actually reduce uh, the carbon emissions that we have. And we need to make sure we can manage that water. And this is not about just forest management or raking. Uh, Anybody who lives here in California is insulted by that, quite frankly. And he keeps perpetrating this lie. Meanwhile, if you go to the San Francisco Chronicle, they'll even publish this. Is climate change worse than California fires or is it poor forest management? Both. So Garcetti's accusing the president of lying for pointing out that forest management in California is terrible when the experts that Garcetti cites are like, yeah, no, the forest management's terrible. Maybe the change in climate, whether it's from CO2 or not, right? Maybe the change in climate is playing a role. Climate is always playing a role. 
Now, this is liberals can't think. Their brains can't wrap around this. That the climate, the world is not a stable climate. Always. It's not always staying at the same temperature. It's constantly in flux. It's constantly changing. It's like a chaos system. You don't know what's going to happen, what's coming. What's... It's constantly changing over time. So, of course, there's climate change. But is it this crisis that they're making it out to be? <sighs> there's been a century of mismanaging Sierra Nevada forests, Nevada forests, pardon me, that is impacting all of California right now. Um, Forest management is a major part of the problem, according to people whose jobs are to fight fires. But when Democrats talk about it, they say the president's just lying be- because they're nuts, because they, they, it doesn't matter. They'll say whatever they have to say as long as it allows them to do what they want and keep the, pop- the uh, unwashed masses in place. Richard Grinnell went after Pelosi on this one. This is the Democrat ethos now. I'm going to tell you everything you have to do, and then I'm going to do different things. And if you question it, you're not about science. Play five. Let me, let me tell you one thing that I learned about being in Washington, D.C. There's a whole group of people in Washington, D.C. who hate the outsider. They have their own rules. You see, their rules allow them to go to San Francisco, get their hair done, And then they demand an apology from you for not keeping a secret. The whole town works on secrets, backroom deals. They spoon feed you information. They keep information from you. Indeed they do. 